and here they are. Next generation biomicroscopy, centralized ophthalmic testing, electronic patient encounters, and automated comprehensive screening. And I'll discuss them in turn in the ensuing slides. Slit lamp biomicroscopy is good at detecting eye disease, but it's subjective and inconsistent, meaning it's based on the attention and training of the examiner. The examiner also is required to write down all the findings accurately and pseudo-quantitatively. If they fail to document something on exam, it might as well not have been there. It's time consuming to have an examiner perform a slit lamp examination, and therefore it's costly, and it's somewhat uncomfortable for patients. Ultimately, the slit lamp illumination in a slit lamp ion microscope allows the examiner to view magnified cross-sections of transparent tissues in the eye. And we know that OCT is very good at doing exactly that, viewing magnified cross-sections of transparent tissues in the eye. So we feel that OCT may be very good at detecting eye disease and potentially replacing slit lamp ion microscopy in many situations. Additional advantages are the OCT images that are produced are objective, they can be reviewed by any examiner, and assessments can be made. The procedure is consistent. That means the machine does it the same way every time. It's not in a rush. It doesn't skip certain areas. It doesn't overlook disease, and can perform the same exam whether you're in Kansas or in India. The images that it, that it produces are saved for perpetuity. So in a practice that might utilize this examination technique, for patients that come in years from now, they can look back on previous year's exams and do head-to-head -head comparisons of the eye exam from three years before uh, versus the examination at the current time. The scanning should be quick. It should be automatable. It may not require dilation, and it certainly won't require bright lights, which scare away some patients. And for all these reasons, it should be available at a much reduced expense compared to a costly slit lamp exam done by an expert examiner. I'm listing here the, the typical findings uh, documented in a slit lamp exam. And what you can imagine and what you can see is that an OCT biomicroscope won't be able to examine everything in the eye. It won't be able to do a good exam of external structures, and it certainly won't examine the periphery of the eye. However, certain diseases in the periphery may be observable in the central axis of the eye. For example, vitreous hemorrhage, vitreous inflammation, potentially even Schaefer's sign or liberated pigment. Anything that gets into the aqueous layer of the eye, based on the laws of diffusion, can diffuse, diffuse centrally. As an example, a patient in my own clinic uh, several weeks ago came in and, and the OCT showed red blood cells over the macula. Now, there was no evidence of a vitreous hemorrhage on 90 diopter biomicroscopic examination. However, on good indirect peripheral examination, there was a very small vitreous, base, a vitreous hemorrhage in the vitreous base inferiorly, and because it diffused through the aqueous layer in the eye, it was actually detectable on central uh, axial OCT. So there may be some peripheral findings which are visible even with central OCT exams. How would it work? Well, B scans or 3D OCT scans could be captured sequentially at greater depths each time to cover the entire axis of the eye. What you see here is a scan of the anterior segment. The machine moves back, moves the focal plane back a few millimeters, scans the lens, moves back a few millimeters, scans the vitreous, so on and so forth until the machine has moved the focal point of the instrument all the way back to the retina and choroid uh, and captured sequentially uh, an entire set of B scans for the eye. Here's a simulation of how it might be used. Uh, this is at, at the first visit a patient uh, who has anterior chamber cell and flare visible on OCT, which has recently been demonstrated in the peer-reviewed literature. Vitreous cell also visible on OCT and cystoid macular edema. Imagine the, the examining physician institutes a treatment for this patient and sees them back at a follow-up visit. By comparing the images side by side and doing this head-to-head -head analysis, the examiner can say to the patient, look, your anterior chamber cell and flare have resolved, your vitreous cell is better, but it's still present, and your cystoid macular edema is mostly gone. And this, we believe, may be superior to current techniques where we have to rate things subjectively as 1 plus, 2 plus, 3 plus, rely on our memories of the exam from weeks before, and in situations where many examiners might uh, participate in the care of a patient and have differing opinions, you wouldn't have to worry as much because this is a head-to-head -head comparison done by the same examiner. When looking at the findings that are collected for a comprehensive eye exam, physicians uh, collect 
many findings that we feel can also be collected by an OCT, OCT biomicroscope uh, armed with other diagnostic tests that I will talk about uh, in ensuing slides. Certain things are, are, are importantly missing. For one, measurements of intraocular pressure. We don't know if there's a way to measure intraocular pressure using an OCT system at the current time. As I mentioned, the external exam will be difficult to do uh, completely, and certainly examination of the periphery and even examination of the vessels in the eye uh, will be somewhat incomplete and difficult to do. There are some other small deficiencies which we feel may, we may be able to overcome. But what you see here ultimately is many of the components of a comprehensive eye exam, many of those findings can be collected by this instrument and then assessed by uh, an examiner.